Well, for all the discussions taking place at that COP29 climate summit, I'm joined now on the line from the Azerbaijani capital, Baku, by Arise correspondent Ovieteme George. How nice to see you, Ovieteme. Uh, let's start with that speech by the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, which is being seen as a sort of battle cry full of big, bold statements. Um, what do you reckon he meant there about tearing down the walls of finance? Well, I am still trying to decipher what the UN Secretary said there, Antonio Guterres. Well, yesterday, um, it wasn't quite clear if the United States of America would be supporting, you know, it has always played this big role in financing uh, other countries. And now talking about carbon credit, carbon streaming, carbon capture, uh, it is that thematic preoccupation dominating COP29, you know, building on the successes of the previous COPs, including COP28 in uh, the Dubai Expo City. Uh, that was just last year, but this year, just from the very first day yesterday, it became very clear that some countries actually came prepared talking about carbon emissions, the impact on them, and of course, uh, carbon credits. Well, today, Antonio Guterres, I wasn't at plenary, but he was quite lucid and equivocal in stating that the world should brace up to the reality that it has to face. So Guterres, probably was blunt, but he was quite passing on the message that something has to be done. There was no time for that. The time was of the essence where countries must brace up. But look at the bigger countries here. Sometimes the complaint may be that of sincerity, or should we say insincerity on the part of the bigger countries who are expected to finance all this. So poorer countries or countries that we could call third world are the receiving end when the bigger countries do not play that role to assume that status and to convince the world, Charles? Yes, indeed. I mean, that, that's, a, that's an interesting point because, I mean, the bottom line really, and I think that's what um, the UN Secretary General was saying, is that it, it's really all about money, about funding the things that the uh, richer countries say they are going to fund. I mean, we've had this announcement, for instance, of a carbon market. I mean, what's your assessment of that with regard to how it might benefit developing countries? Well, there is a bit of assurance here that the United Nations would supervise the carbon market, carbon credit, uh, what goes to countries that are at the receiving end of high level greenhouse gases emissions, talking about uh, the world that is actually talking, we want to emit so much into the atmosphere, you have to pay, it's more like a penalty. But there are some who are not too comfortable with that. Health is quite vital. So why, <laughs> for how much would that be? But for developing countries, I don't know in this context where to place Nigeria, but because we are a country that depends so much on oil, a mono-commodity economy since 1956, June to be precise, in the Loibri, present-day Ogbea Council area of Bielsa State. Who supervises it? Now, narrowing down to Nigeria, the regulatory agencies, the National Oil Spill Detection Regulatory Agency, how well has it performed? So far, there are places that none could actually brace up to get to, to know if carbon is being emitted there. So what is the, what is the modality? I can take you literally to Awoye in a larger local government area of Ondo State, where a fire has been burning for more than four years. By next year, it will be five years. Nobody is saying anything yet. The fire is still raging. But coming to... That is oil-induced fire, Ororo Well 1, that's what it's called. Coming to River State of Fiuminama in Okrika local government area, again, this facility belongs to the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, that is the NNPCL, fire-induced, and so it's more like a free thing for carbons to be emitted into the air. Now look at Barantoru in the Barai Kingdom area of Yenagoa local government area of Bielsa State, 
gas flaring over the years. But there's something an international oil company does. It calls well testing. And whenever the wells are tested, there's this tremor shaking the, the buildings in that, in that community. And whenever it rains, the water is more like acid rain. So the complaint has always been deep headache, migraine, carcinogens and all that. But coming back to carbon credits, the question has always been who regulates it, who monitors it, who does the calculation, how can c communities benefit from that? So that will always be a challenge. But looking at the positives at COP29, there seems to be this bold move to actualize that, that countries must walk the talk this time around. So the expectations are very high. It's still early days, just day two of COP29 here in Baku, Azerbaijan. So many are hoping that there should be some high level of sincerity on the part of these big countries that are dominating when it comes to talk about financing here. So it's more like narrowing down to sincerity, let them rise up to that responsibility and protect poorer or developing countries when you talk about carbon emissions as the world strives towards zero carbon emissions or maybe low carbon emissions. So these are the concerns here. Now, I met a man who actually said something. He's a sculptor. He molded something and he was there with it. He said, a bronze sculpture depicting a big woman being carried on the shoulders of a starving man. The woman is Justitia, the Western goddess of justice. So, that man was actually painting a picture there. He said he would be thrown out of COP29, but then he feels the countries are actually not living up to their responsibility, and COP29 may not, may not. He was a bit pessimistic there that it may not achieve what it wants, because what he feels is double standards on the part of the big countries. We should rise up to the occasion to protect the smaller countries or developing countries. Charles. Okay, Ovietemi, thank you very much indeed. Ovietemi George is a rice correspondent. He was talking to me on the line there from the Azerbaijani capital, Baku, where, of course, that COP29 climate summit is taking place. <music>